Good morning, Survivor! And we're here in 7 Days to Die again. We are in Alpha 19, obviously, but why are we starting from, well, the initial start screen? And the reason is, I wanted to do a beginner's guide to 7 Days to Die. Now, I know a lot of people who watch my channel are... People who are medium experienced in the game or even very experienced with the game, but there are a number of new people who are hitting the game in Alpha 19 and it's not an entirely easy game to just get started with. So I wanted to walk people through some of the basic things of how to start the game, what you should be doing when you start the game, and some tips and tricks to just keep you alive at least the first day. If you're an experienced player, well, then switch to playing the game while this one, is, this video is running in the background. <laughs> Thank you very much. But if you're a new player, I hope you're going to enjoy this and you get some information and some ideas of how to just get into the game so that you don't keep dying and dying and dying without really understanding how anything works. If you do enjoy my videos, please hit that subscribe button and press that like button as well, that thumbs up, that really does help. And if you have questions, ask them in the comment section below as well. I do have a Discord, I have a Twitter, so feel free to join and follow me there as well. So this is the initial loading screen that has changed some across the versions. The font actually changed in Alpha 18, was 18.4, 18.3? But uh, it's basically the same. So we're going to do first thing, options. You can do your video options. This is something that if you're having issues with the performance, consider dropping them down a little bit. Obviously, the better they are, the better the game looks, but it also takes more out of your graphics card and your CPU. You also have the basic audio thing. I would just leave them on default until you sort of get into it. You know, you can obviously tweak the, the sound setting, music volume, all those things. Dynamic music is pretty good. This one is a little bit high, higher than uh, default because I like to have more of this one, but just leave them default. It doesn't change very much anyway. Controls, just leave them default. I don't touch them unless you're using a maybe a controller then you might want to tweak them to make sure they really work you want to get in and craft your own profile you can use someone else's it doesn't matter but you can create your own let's say you want to have a new one you want to do test and that was a bad way of spelling and you can define is it a male or female how does it look what's the hairstyle and all of that just do whatever you want you can randomize as well if you don't want to do it by yourself and of course if you move left click and you can move it around right click you can turn it which can be useful if you want to see how it looks from the side and everything select whatever you want to have and um, then go ahead and change the feet size and the muscle whatever it doesn't really matter apply and everything when you want to get it done because this is the player you would actually play with in the game the one you have selected like i have right now okay let's go back back and now there's editing tools, don't worry about these ones, these are high level things. Credits, obviously if you want to find out who's made the game, you probably don't care at this moment. The first thing you want to do, if you're playing a single player, it's new game. When, you want, when you've started a game, and I'll show you how to do that, next time you will actually go to continue game. And this is where you have your save games and choosing which one you want to continue. And you can select different ones and change the stat, the, well, the diff different settings there as well. If you are playing online, you do join a game. I would not suggest doing that necessarily the first time you play, unless it's with a friend. And you can select here from the different servers. You can filter and everything or you can do a connect to IP if you have a friend who has a server which is actually a, one of the good ways of starting the game go into a server with your friend and uh, let him sort of not, not gonna say he'll handhold you but uh, give you some tips and tricks and keep you alive but assuming you are playing by yourself let's go into new game we're gonna do new new game and uh, is new in Swedish by the way the best way to start is probably going to be Navis game because it's a handcrafted map that is reasonably good. So we're going to start with that one. You can, of course, also create your own random world as well, in which case you type in a seed. Let's do seed. And you see as I type, the generator world name changes. We can also set the size of it. Try not to make it too big. 4K or 8K is more than enough. And then you just generate, but it takes a while. So we're going to go back and actually use Navis game. Now, server visibility, if you're playing by yourself, keep it not listed because otherwise it actually shows up to other people. You might want to do a password if you want to have multiple players. If you want to have, have your friend join, set it to two, for instance, or three or four or something, but then make sure you put in a game password. Basic, this is the settings. Now, no, Adventure is the default. It actually gives you 
uh, makes you take less damage from the zombies and uh, you actually deal more damage to the zombies. This is a new default for Alpha 19. Nomad has always been the default before, which is sort of 100% of damage uh, taken and, and, and given, but they've actually made it a little bit easier for people by starting them off in default. So we're going to do Nomad. You can set how long is a 24 hour cycle. This is actually real time. So if you set it at 10 minutes, the days go really fast, which is not recommended. 60 minutes is probably default. You could do, do 90 or 120 if you need more time. You want to sort of chill and take it easy. It works as well. Daylight length is how many hours. If you do 18, it basically have light from 4 a.m. until 10 p.m. Blood wound frequency is how often you want to have blood wounds. And this is the really dangerous part where you get a horde coming in. If you are really scared of the zombies, you're having problems, just turn it off. Now that doesn't give you the whole game experience, but it makes it a lot more straightforward to learn. Blood Moon range, assuming you want to have a variation, so you have seven plus minus two days. Some people play with that. It's not necessarily recommended when you start off. Having it a little bit more predictable is a lot easier because then you know what to prepare for. The warning, do you know on the morning, evening or disable? I usually like morning so I know and I don't miss it out. You have their speed. These are all default settings. You could change them if you want to. For instance, let's say night speed, you want to have them walk as well because you think that, hey, I, it's so scary at night and I just want to have them walk. Now, the feral ones, you have to have separately because the feral ones are a lot harder and they're different type of zombies. So let's do that. But we're going to do default because that's how the game is meant to be played. Persistent profiles, yes, keep that. And yeah, all that is fine. XP multiplier, keep it 100. If you increase it, you probably go like, hey, I increase the XP and it'll be much easier. Now, actually, it's the opposite. The more experience you get, the harder the game gets earlier and faster, which makes you more challenged. So if you really want to make it simpler, you drop down the XP multiplier and you increase the play uh, the 24 hour cycle to 120 minutes, which means it's a slower game style. But we're going to do 100%. Advanced, this is things that it really depends on how you want to do it. If you want to have really easy to bash blocks and destroy them, you bring them down to 50. Default is normally very, and let's do default here. Default is normally the way that is recommended. Loot respawns every 30 minutes. You drop everything when you die. You drop nothing when you quit. You have eight enemies at a time during the Blood Moon Horde. You have the, the enemy spawning, you have airdrops, you don't have cheat mode, etc. Multiplayer, this is only if you're playing multiplayer. If you don't, then you don't really have to worry about it. And that's connected to this one. If you're gonna open it up, and I'm not gonna open up, I'm gonna do not listed. And this is what actually impacts that. And if you are a new player, don't worry about that. Just do single player. But either way, we're gonna do default. I wish that I would set this at not listed and one player by default. Um, but for some reason they haven't. What happens is that if I hit default, it goes public and people can log in and you have no password. And that's a really dumb way of doing it because you might have people just come in and start trolling you. And it should be like this. It should be unlisted so that you have to turn it on and it should be only you. But for some reason, that's not what they've done. The rest I have set back to default. And let's start it up. As the game is loading, you'll see there's a bunch of tips down here at the bottom is number 18 out of 30. You left click, you go forward, you right click, you go backwards. And this is actually quite helpful to just have a look at what does it say. Obviously, you're not necessarily going to go through all these one the first time because it starts up a little bit faster than you can probably go through and read and understand all these ones. But every time you load in, just have a bit of a look because it does give you a little bit of information of how the game actually works. A lot of people don't look the, at these ones and they miss out some uh, pretty handy tips and tricks. For instance, pickaxes are great for harvesting various, also blah, 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 and we missed that one out. And now we are starting in and it's gonna give you the basics of survival, blah, blah, blah. It gives you, this is the only story element, actually one of the two story elements that are part of it because there's not a lot of story. Let's continue and you get basic survival, which is active quest, which is up here in the right. And we're gonna come back to that really, really quickly. But it says the status is up here and access inventory, navigate to quest menu to actually have a look at it. So I said that pop-up was the first out of two well, the uh, story, this is the second, the note from the Duke of Naviscan. You cannot find it, you can only start with it, but it tells you blah, 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 consequences, thank you, you owe us, blah, blah. So this gives you a hint of what the actual story is, but let's put that one aside for now. 
We also have a land claim block. Let's put that aside for now because that is really advanced. You don't need that initially. So how do we check our quest? Well, hit tab by default and you get your character and crafting screen. Now this is where you craft things. If I don't craft a bandage, I click on it. It says I need two cloth fragments. I don't have it. I can favor it, etc. And a bunch of other things. We don't need that necessarily. But if we go to the character, we'll see that I am fairly naked. I have no stuff as well. And it says I'm temporarily protected from heat and cold. No X penalty, death, etc. And this is this little icon here. And it works for until you are level six. So keep that in mind. We have the map, which is this one, also M. You can see where you are, you can zoom in and out. Useful, not necessarily in the beginning, but in a while. Skills, this is where you get to the skills. And there's a different skills here. Perception, strength, fortitude, etc. We'll get back to that in a little bit. Just for now, remember this is where you look at your skills. And when you have skill points, you can actually buy them. You can look here to see what they do, which is useful. There's quite a lot of them, so that takes a while to get into over here quest this is what we want to look at basic survival it says craft them by the bedroll by gathering plant fibers so if you don't know what to do go look at this one because it will give a good idea of how to do it doesn't necessarily tell everything because it says gathering of plant fibers but how do you do that it doesn't actually necessarily tell you so the next one is the players but let's stick on the quest for now you can also look at the journal which has some information quest tracking how to do that Basics of survival, survival, first aid, etc. This is helpful for when you learn new things. And it says basically at the bottom that you learned it. You can go to the journal or just have a look and it'll give you some basic information. But let's look at crafted bedroll. So it says you have to gather plant fibers. And if you don't know how to do that, it can be a little bit of a challenge. Now, survival games tend to be sort of similar. Either they require you to hit E to pick it up. But seven days that I doesn't do that. Seven days that I re requires you to bash things. So left click, bash, bash. And if you look on the bottom right, it'll give you some experience and it'll actually tell you that you picked up now six of these on plant fibers. I need eight, 10. Now it says craft a bedroll because you obviously picked everything up. You hit escape again, and this one will be highlighted at the top and it'll t even tell you this is connected to the quest. Left click. And we hit craft or W if you want to uh, shortcut it. And this is your crafting queue. So you can queue up, up up to four things to do at a time. Let's wait another second. And now we have it. You left click and pull it to your hand, which is your toolbar. I use my scroll wheel to shift back and forth. You can also use one, two, three, four, five, six to eight. And you go up to somewhere and it, you see it's got a little bit of the outline, the white one. That one basically says, where does it prevent zombie spawns? Which can be useful later on when you're in POIs. But for now, just right click and it's been placed down. Now it says, gather plant fibers, gather some wood. And let's see, can we find some wood? There's a few ways to get wood. The best way is to look for these ones. So it's basically the small bushes or something. Punch it, gives you one, find another one, and you have two. Then you go look for these small little stone. There's one. Ooh, burst that. We'll get to that in a little bit. And where is another? Come on, give me another stone. There's some loot here. We are going to get to that as well in just a moment. But we need one more stone. Ah, I finally found another stone. It can be a little bit challenging actually to do to find them, uh, but you pick it up and now you go back and you craft your stone axe. So what you should be doing, and I'm not going to go through all these, when you go through the basic quests here, and uh, which means gather more plant fibers and just follow them up. I'm going to very quickly go through these ones and show you what happens after that. It actually involves multiple things like at how you craft some frames and how you make them and how you upgrade and build and everything. But uh, I'll uh, get through that really quickly and I'll catch you. If you wonder how to wear something, left click and you either hit W for wear or you can basically pull it in here. Can you pull it? Yeah, you can pull it in here as well. I never do that. I just hit W to wear it. So where do you get feathers for this one? Well, you go to the bird's nest and you hit E to search them. And if you're lucky, you get a couple of feathers and you get some eggs that you can use later on to cook some food. And while you're doing this, keep in mind that you want to keep sort of in the general area where you started off because there's not going to be any zombies here. If you walk up to your PUIs, there will likely be zombies. If you walk off to, like, into the distance, 
you'll see zombies spawning. But if you just stand in the small little area that you, you started off, you're not going to see any zombies for a while. So just do that when you're completing this quest because you don't want to get killed. Now, I have a bow and arrow. And a lot of people don't know how this actually works. But it's very simple. You hit left click. And you see I loaded it. And you hold it. And it will aim at something. You let go. And it will shoot it. Now if you're lucky you can even pick up some of these arrows. If they didn't break. Which is half likely depending on uh, what you're shooting at. If you shoot at the ground I think you have less of a risk. Let's see here. Did it break? It can be a little bit challenging. Oh, here it is. A little bit difficult to see, but I can pick it up if you happen to miss. If you hit a zombie, it might or might not break. The game is going to show you the basics of building. You make a wood frame block and you right click to upgrade it. And now you have a very nice little base. Now, actually, it's not really much of a base. Grab the campfire, put it down, and you are almost done with the quest. It says, you good job, blah, blah, blah. And it says the next one is locate the trader. And you actually want to make sure you head that way once you've gotten this far. You can hit your map and you can look at where it is. If you right click, you can set a quick waypoint. You normally don't need to do that for the active quest because it actually shows up. You'll see pretty easy to locate. It's off here to the south, 600 meters. But before we go over there, I'm going to show you some things that you want to be aware of as you start exploring the map. Firstly, at the bottom left, you'll see the blue bar, which is the stamina. If I run around, you'll see it goes down. I stop, it'll start recovering. And that's the blue one. You also have your health. So if something bashes you, you'll start to take damage. And this is how it looks when it's full, 100 out of 100. It will obviously go down as well. And if you really get injured or you get really tired or hungry, you'll see small black bars that are showing up here as well, which means it restricts your maximum levels. You might have 80 out of 90 simply because you haven't eaten or you might have 80 out of 85 because you've been injured permanently and you need to, well, not permanent, semi-permanently, but because you need to heal yourself but you'll notice it. You also at the top, you'll see the location towards your bedroll, which is this one, the bed, obviously it'll say it's day one and the time. Keep an eye on the time, especially because with the default settings as 10 p.m., it gets dark and at darkness, zombies start running. So they're just walking generally during the daytime. Nighttime, they will be running. So you want to be in safety, but hit N, which is the skill item or skill area and you'll see where we have all these different skills and this is where you really want to start thinking about what skills do i want to use and you might want at some point want to look through them but you know here's some that i would generally recommend first i would take pack mule so what you see on your inventory here is that you have all these three times nine unlocked you can put things in here as well it doesn't matter what happens is when this one fills up and it gets up to here you get encumbered which means you get slower you take more stamina hit by running around which is not useful so if we do one off let's do under strength we're going to do one pack mule it says you get three more items to carry before being encumbered and this is really good you see now it's unlocked this one when you are moving around, you want to pick up as much as you can, but you don't want to get it in encumbered because that makes it really easy to get killed by zombies because you are so slow and so tired. So unlocking a little bit of this one can be really helpful. One thing I also like to do is healing factor. While you do heal, normally this one makes you heal one health every 90 seconds and you heal the critical injuries faster. Really, really helpful. Stamina usage is also an issue in Alpha 19. So rule one cardio is really helpful. And now we have one point left and we're gonna go to probably, well, I would choose between possibly lucky looter, which means you have a loot bonus for you looting them and it's faster. Or you can do sexual Tyrannosaurus, which basically means that you reduce melee and tool stamina by eight and 15, which is also useful. So I'm gonna do that one. And now we're going to start looking at how do we loot. So you see all these things around this, uh, like the trash, there's the box and everything. And what you want to do is you just go up and hit E and you'll find something. Oh, some lockpicks. Hardball boxes are really good. Some ammunition. We don't have weapon. Cars are good, but it takes a while to loot, obviously. Come on. Ooh, nice stuff. Trash. More stuff. More trash nothing purses and backpacks are good because you if you're real lucky you find some weapons and that was about it i usually usually start around a house like this and you could go in of course we can loot the mail 
Nope, oh, nothing there. You could go in, but be careful. Be, this is where you run into zombies and... Well, zombies is what generally kills you. And there we saw two zombies coming here. If you feel confident fighting them, then try to hit. Move backwards. Hit again. Oh, they ran away. Come on. You hit them, try to knock them down. Hit them again. Left click. I'm using my club if I want to shoot. Let's do this. Right click to aim and... Oh, see the arrows in her? Ooh, I can pick up my arrow and see so yeah, I bash them down. And then you can go and loot what you have. Clothes pile. Ooh, this one might be nice. Let's just wear them so we don't look so naked. Go in and find some other stuff as well. Some trash, etc. But it can be dangerous. So if you're the brave kind of player, go ahead and search things. Especially piles of book can be really good because it lets you find schematics where you basically use them and you learn how to do new things. And it's a little bit dark in here. It's another bookcase. These ones are normally very good. It'll tell you what to do. You might well just grab them and go out and uh, read them. Uh, you can pick up things. You can just, you know, whatever you want to do. Loot this thing. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because time is wasting. So we saw with this one, Needle and Tread, you can make denim jeans, skirts, and overalls. And how do you do that? Well, this in the crafting, obviously. You look here. And in pants, and you need cloth and so sewing kit, which obviously we don't have. So now we're gonna run over to the trader because that's actually where you wanna go. First thing you wanna do, obviously, pick up things on the way. Bird's nest, really useful because it gets you some more feathers for arrows. If you see a tree, use your axe, just chop it a little bit. You can spend a little bit of time in chopping uh, one or two of these ones down. It'll give you a bunch of uh, wood that you will be using anyway. So it's something that is really useful on the way. Chop one of these down, or two, or three. Nothing that you might want to go looking for. Let's see if we can find that. We want to find some stones, like this one. Chop it as well. You see we're getting stone, which is what you use, for instance, for the stone arrows, which is useful. You use it for the campfire. You use it for some other buildings as well. But it's good to have a bunch of these ones on you because it's nothing worse than having tons of feathers, but no stones. You can't actually make any arrows. And the bow is one of the better weapons when you want to be safe in Seven Days to Die early on because it means that you can get up, up above the zombies, shoot them without having to go melee. Melee is what gets you killed. Nothing what you can do bash these cotton plants there's a bunch of them you can actually take these ones as well but they're not that important early on so now you have let's see you have cotton what you can do is you hit recipes and it'll tell you what you actually get from it we're going to craft these ones the cloth fragments which of course you saw we needed if we want to make some denim pants but now that we have cloth well what do you use that for well you do recipes again and we can get Bandage. In this case, we can do duct tape because we have some glue. We don't need to do that now. And now you have a bandage. And again, this is something that can help you when you're getting hit and injured and it'll stop bleeding, etc. So having a few of these ones on you can be really helpful. You also find these small little piles of different resources. I would not spend too much time on it initially, just bypass them, but whatever you find, for instance, the small crawlers, you could bash them. Just be careful, use your bow if you really need to, if you're not confident about your melee skills. You'll see now, because I've moved out of my original area, I'm starting to see zombie spawns. Let's make sure we are looting that as well. Right click will power attack, takes more stamina though then it gives you a chance to bash them for additional damage as well. And then we come to a traitor. And this one is guarded by... Uh, is that Marlene? Is that Darlene? I don't know what your name is. But anyway... So when you get here, make sure you go and loot everything you can. Sometimes these things are... Oh, let's make sure we actually close it. You hear that sound in the distance? Metallic? It's because there's a zombie on the outside here who's trying to bash through. The whole area is trader protected, which means that zombies can't actually break through. But if you leave the door open, they will not come in after you. So we come in here, close the door. And this is where you can buy things. But let's start with, do you have any jobs? And it gives you the option to take jobs, take quests. And we're going to take the closest one. Clear one is pretty easy. You can do some uh, buried supplies. We're going to do this one. You need to kill all the zombies. And it'll tell you what job. you need to do. Except talk to her again and see what Good your luck. inventory is. And this is where you can actually buy things if you need to. 
things that you probably want to do if you have way too much stuff don't sell it unless you really really need to but have a look at for instance food is usually pretty good but you start off with no actual money and money is something we get from the quest for instance we can loot them as well but quests are really good but finding food, for instance, here if you find any can be really good because food is a bit of an issue. You can also go to the vending machines. If you're lucky, there'll be some food here as well. But early game, you always end up with a bunch of things that you actually can't use, but you don't want to necessarily sell them because it gives you so little money for it. So craft the chest, place it down somewhere. You can't do it too close, as you can see here, because it's the trader protection over there. Anyway, so let's put it over here. And we'll just drop off things that we don't actually need for the moment, like all of this. This maybe. <gasps> oh, and there's a wolf. Now, this is a bit of an issue. So, early on in the game, you are starting in the forest areas. There is a very low risk of wolves uh, spawning around. It can happen. And if it does, you probably want to make sure you go the other direction because it probably will kill you. They are fairly tanky unless you were lucky enough to get up on, let's say, a big rock and there's none. So, no, give them a wide berth because they will kill you. Nighttime is even worse because wolves, dire wolves, bears and stuff will be spawning as well. So don't be out at night. But daytime, you can run into wolves and they are dangerous. All wild animals are dangerous. Well, sorry. Chickens are not. Rabbits are not. Snakes are manageable, but wolves will wreck your day. So avoid them. But either way, let's have a look. We see that our first quest is over there. So we're going to go this way and uh, try to avoid the stupid wolf. We reach the ranger station and this is the quest marker. Here's a chicken if you need some uh, some food. You can... Uh... Oh, I missed him. Oh, okay. There's another zombie here. Let's take care of him. And this is where you start the quest. You hit E. And you've started it. Now you go through and actually clear this. Normally, if you look around, you'll find a guided way to actually complete this one. And let's see if there's anything in around here. No. That's peculiar. Normally, there is a good way. Oh, there's a toilet. You could always search them because if you're lucky, you find some nice stuff. But this one. Oh, you have to open it. Never mind. That was me being dumb. There will be zombies that you have to actually kill. Take it easy. Go ahead and just clear it. Make sure you loot everything. Find some food. Food is really good. And if you don't know how to get somewhere, just have a look at what's around. Normally it requires you to do a little bit of parkour and everything, but there will be generally a path that the game wants you to follow. Just be careful so you don't fall down and break a leg. Now we're up here. A locked door. It probably wants you to go through... Let's see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oof. Yes, if you're like me, you get startled. Uh, be a little bit careful like that. Whew. Well, that freaked me out. I played this game so many times and I still get freaked out. Oh, come on. Let's take care of her. If she has glowing eyes, she's the feral. Early on, they're usually not. Nothing to consider. Usually, the developers like to make these kind of PIs where they're all hiding up there. Let's jump. And then we go out again. We like to hide them. Let's smash them. Let's get out. And again, this is where you want to keep an eye on your time. And let's bash her. Oh, got hit. I'm out of stamina, which is a bit of a problem, but they'll come out follow me. Come on. Come on, buddy. Is your name Yo? No, that's not Yo. This is... Oh, okay. This is the new janitor zombie. Pretty cool. But he's going to kill you if you get too close. All right. You could use your bow as well if you have enough arrows. But I think that's it. And you heard the fighting music. Fight music usually means that there's zombies around. Okay, now it finally ended. Now we go ahead and loot this stuff. And uh, if you're lucky, you get some food, etc. as well. Normally, there are some food piles. Ooh, take that. There's some uh, chests. Take that as well. You see here's a bunch of things. Nothing that really can be useful. You can learn this one. If you want to use it, but just grab everything. Then you, if you see a crate, chop it down, left click, use your axe, it's probably the easiest way. And then before long, it's broken and you can loot it and, ooh, nothing we really need. But just grab everything you can. But you see, it says return to trader because we completed it and let's run over there. And you have to be a little bit fast because you want to get this done. We're going to go, if you are running really late now, let's say it's really late, um, 
time it's getting towards uh, eight or nine don't run over over there just stay here during the night time because here you are pretty safe if there was a an unbroken staircase taking out one of the one of the stairs would would help because that means zombies cannot get up there and uh, I'm, I would be safe up here, but I'm gonna go over there because I have some time left. But if you're a little bit short on time, just stay here for the night and wait until the morning. Don't make too much of a noise because zombies will spawn in the area like here. And if you make too much noise, they will start bashing and breaking things and you will have a bad day or bad night rather. So I'm back here at the trader. Close the door, the talk to Jen, and you'll see she'll give me adventure. experience and she'll give me money. Now I can decide what to take here. In this case, I don't have any weapon that can use these ones, but they're generally really good. But this one is probably harder, so I'm going to take this one for now. Now I can take another job. Let's say clear. Let's clear like about that one to the steel, east. Talk to her again. And now because I have money, the first things I would actually look at getting is potentially some healing items. But food is always good. Food is something that is a bit of an issue the whole game. And I'll get to why that matters. So let's see what we can get here. Nothing particular. We're pretty good. You could, for instance, buy some things to read, learn more skills. But I, I, I prefer to uh, save up to actually get some weapons. So try not to use too much of it because you want to collect a couple of thousand, three, four thousand. If you want to get a hunting rifle, pistol is a little bit cheaper. I found an AK, uh, an actual an M60. A machine gun for like 1600 whatever a low level so save some money if you can but food if you do run out of food you're gonna have a bad day so stocking up a little bit is useful and this brings us to food but first let's look here you see i've now got too much stuff here which means i am encumbered and that can be a bit of an issue in this case we're going to throw away the coffee beans we're going to throw away this we're going to throw away this and you see now i'm no longer encumbered good so I don't walk slower but the two bars down here I haven't covered them yet because this is food your hunger and this is your thirst now thirst matter and if you want to you can go to your character sheet here and you can see what they are specifically now what happens is that the lower they drop the more problems you have if you're really hungry or really thirsty your stamina and everything goes down and you don't want that and if you for instance take a can of tuna it'll give you five food but it'll also give you more health so if i use this one my health will go up it should go up to 100 yes because i healed a little bit same thing for paris it gives you food it gives you health and this one gives you water as well some of them might give you a stamina bonus and there might be a chance of dysentery and stuff like that so have a look at things before you you drink or eat it don't drink the molotov cocktails these are really really dangerous be a bit careful with these one because they will set things on fire including yourself if you don't properly use them but before night hits let's run back to our ranger station now I'm back here to the ranger station here so I can spend the night as you can see it's a uh, 2051 and it keeps you safe it'll keep you for the night and this is a probably good place to make sure you put some chests you arrange your inventory and everything another thing you want to have a look at is your experience bar as you do things you progress you get some experience which we'll see on the bottom right you'll gain your levels and this is where we got the points the level points and nighttime is a good time to actually look through some of these ones so you can figure out what you actually want to do and depending on how adventurous you are either way when you are spending the first night be quiet if you're up here and you're really quiet zombies can't see you meaning you're inside for instance you will be pretty much 100 percent safe if you're up here and zombies come by and you make a lot of noise, they will detect you and they will be coming for you. And that can mean a really, really bad night. If you're really adventurous, you think that, hey, you know, I'm pretty good. Then you go out, you chop some trees nearby. Just check for zombies around. Then go chop some trees. You could go and harvest, let's say, a boulder, for instance. Give you some stone. Uh, what else could we do? We could uh, dig up some soil if we've got a shovel, stuff like that. Make sure you loot everything. But during the daytimes, zombies generally walk unless they're feral. And you don't run into ferals really early on. Nighttime, they will be running all the time. And that can be really scary and dangerous if you are not an experienced player. So my tip is just take it easy the first night stay in the, the pi that you just cleared because it will be safe because you've already cleared it try to get up on top if you for instance uh, find it's a place where let me do that let me show you that there is no way to get up maybe it's just a one-story place what you can do however is make some frames place them down 
and do something like this and now be up on the second level. Now zombies can't get to you either and it should be safe here as well. You have a torch, really nice. However, make sure that if you use the torch, make sure you are indoors because the torch provides light. Light provides visibility and it'll make the zombies see you easier. They don't have really good eyesight, but if there's a nice light there, it can be a bit challenging. Also, if you crouch, you'll see on the bottom left here, this is the crouch meter. And uh, this is the, it shows you how well you are hidden. If you are, let's say I'm running and walking around here, it goes up. If I try to jump, it'll also go up a little bit. But if you are, let's say in a shadow, and you're crouching, you're being quiet, you see it goes down as well. You move around, it goes up. And you can use this at nighttime because it dictates how far away zombies will actually detect you. So if you're really quiet, it's really dark, you should be reasonably safe. Oh, I think there's a chicken down there. But if you follow these tips, you should be able to complete the first day and survive and the first night. Just be quiet and before long, you'll hit 4 a.m. and whew, you will have survived your first day and your first night and seven days to die. And now, assuming you're playing default, you have another six days before the Blood Moon Horde comes. And what's the Blood Moon Horde? Well, that should be interesting. You'll find out by going and join, do the trader quest and progress. Don't forget to level up your character and use those skill points. So you get better at doing whatever you want to do, be it fighting, be it resource gathering, looting, building and crafting, or what is it? But night, time for me to sleep. Good night. Oh, by the way, also make sure, make a bedroll and put it down because if I die right now, my bedroll will be over here and I'll respawn there. Not good. Make sure you, when you get your PI, make a new bedroll and put it down so that you can respawn on your location or your home location when you die. Really, really useful. But that's it. Good night. See you tomorrow. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.